All my photos here that I took for the clones project and I have them on my computer. I've already copied them over from my memory card to a folder um, on my computer in the documents. You can always double check that you're looking at the photos that have copied to the computer and not your memory card by double checking the top part here. It'll give you a description of where you are looking at on the computer. So right now I'm in this clones folder in a photography folder that I have on my documents and then it'll have your account, users, Macintosh HD, and computer. So it kind of transcribes where you are on the computer. So just double check that it doesn't say the name of your memory card up here and you're good. So I have all my photos here and I'm gonna click on the first one just once, press the space bar so I can see it full screen and using the arrow keys, I'm going to look through and find the ones that I really like. And I'm going to give the ones I really like five stars, so I know those are the ones that I want to come back to and use for this. So I'm just giving the best ones five stars. With the five on the keyboard, you can rate anything one through five with the numbers one through five on the keyboard. But I'm looking for things that are all from the same set of photos in the same environment where the tripod hasn't moved. Looks like there was a little bit of shifting here, but I might be able to fix that. So I have those rated. I'm going to go over to the filter section over here and click my five star photos so it just shows me those. And you can open these up individually. Um, or open them all at once, but we're going to need them all open at some point. So I'm going to click and drag over them like this to highlight it. Or you can click the first one, hold down shift, and click the last one. Either way, we want all of them open. And so we're going to click return once we have those selected. And since they're raw files, it's going to bring up the raw editor. And we just want to make sure that they're all looking pretty similar as far as the colors and the values of everything, how bright things are. So if you change anything on here, you want to change it for all of them, unless there's something that looks a little bit different, in which case you just want to adjust things so that it matches up. Like this one, I think the sun kind of came out behind the clouds while I was taking these photos. So some of them look a little warmer and lighter than others. So maybe this one I'll already increased the exposure a little bit, but maybe, maybe just a tad more. Maybe warm it up a little bit with the color temperature. That one looks pretty good, but maybe just a little bit and warm it up a little bit. We want them to look pretty close. And maybe warm that one up a little bit. They're looking pretty close. I can always do some more adjustments in the regular part of Photoshop after I add them all together. But we want them to look pretty close. And so if I have that first one selected, hold down shift, click the last one, selects all of them, and I can say open. And it's gonna open all of those in the regular part of Photoshop. Might take a little bit. There we go. So now I have all those in these different tabs here. It looks like for the most part they line up. I think my tripod sunk into the ground a little bit when I took this one or after I took that one maybe. Um, so there's a little bit of adjusting I'll need to do, but for the most part they're looking pretty good. So what I want to do, I'm just going to start over here because I think these are the most lined up. Um, so you just want to keep track of what photos you've done. Uh, I'm going to start on the right here and kind of move my way left just because I know that these four are pretty lined up and this one on the far side here is kind of the one that's a little bit less aligned with the others. Um, so I'm just going to start on one end and go towards the left. So this photo on the right here, that's going to be my background layer. So I'm going to start with that one. So for now, I'm not going to do anything with this. I'm going to go to the next one and I'm going to select all of this photo and I'm going to copy it and paste it over the neck, the previous one. That's going to be my background photo. So I'm going to do command A to select all of this, command C to copy it, and then I'm going to go over to this one here 
and Command V. So now that second image is layer one over the top of the first photo, which is the background layer. And I'm gonna go to the third photo, Command A to select everything, Command C to copy. And I'm gonna go back to that very first photo, Command V and paste that. So now I'm getting more layers here. So I have one, two, three, one, two, three. So I'm going to my fourth one, Command A, Command C. Go back to that first one, Command V, Command V. There we go. And so then we just have the last one, Command A, Command C, and then Command V. So all of these are the ones that I've copied over, and they're all onto this one image. So right now I'm only seeing that very last image that I pasted on top, but if you turn off some of the eyeballs, you can start to see the other layers. So that's my background layer, that's the one on top of that, that's the one on top of that, that's the one on top of that, and that's the one on top of that. So my layer four here is the one that's a little bit unaligned. So I'm going to go to that layer four. I'm gonna turn down the opacity halfway and even if you know they line up pretty well, you still want to turn down the opacity and double check that things are lining up. And then I have the move tool here. I've turned down the opacity just so I can see both of those layers, both this somewhat transparent layer here and the one that's behind it. So I'm just kind of scooching it down until it lines up. You can also do it a little more precisely with the arrow keys on the keyboard. It looks pretty good. It looks like it might be rotated a little bit. So if I do Command T, and instead of doing the adjusting of the size here, I go a little bit farther on the corner till it's that curved arrow. And then I'm going to click and drag it to rotate it a little bit till things are lining up a little bit better. Might need to move it around a little bit. Yeah, it's still looking a little bit blurry. Move this image that way. Now that part's looking off. So this is why it's really important to have it as lined up as possible with a tripod. And if things just flat out don't line up, you might have to just not use that image. But that's looking a lot better. So I'm gonna click the little checkbox and I'm gonna go to my opacity on that layer and turn that back up. And then if I turn off that eyeball and go to this next one, I can double check, turn the opacity down, make sure that lines up with that previous one to it. So. We know that four and three line up, and now this is looking pretty good, so I know that three and two are lining up. So then if we go to two, turn down the opacity, let's double check, it looks like it's lining up pretty good with the previous one. Looks like things are shifting ever so slightly. So what I might do is go to layer one and move it because we know that two lines up with three. Maybe just scooch it a little bit. There we go. So now I'm gonna turn that opacity back up and I'm gonna turn off that layer, go to layer one and make sure it lines up with that background layer. Turn down that opacity. And since I know one lines up with two, I'm gonna move the background a little bit. And if you need to move the background, it defaults to being locked, so I'm just going to unlock that. And then it'll let me move it a little bit. And since it looks like it lines up at the top here of these poles, but not at the bottom, that means it's a little bit rotated, so I'm just going to scooch it. Oop, maybe not that much. That looks a lot better. Anywhere where it's blurry means it's not lining up. So that looks pretty good now. So then I'm going to turn the opacity back up to 100%. The opacity and turning on and off the eyeballs is just to make sure things are lined up. 
That's looking pretty good. So now what I want to do is I'm going to slowly start adding masks. And what masks are going to do is essentially cut a hole in that layer, more or less, so that you can see the layer behind it. So I'm going to start with showing layer three through to layer four here. So if I go to layer four, I go down to the bottom of the layers here and I click on the layer mask. It's going to add that little mask there. As long as I'm clicked on that mask, I can go to the brush tool over in the tools. I want to make sure the hardness of the brush is set to zero. We want it to have those fuzzy edges so it'll be gradual. I have black selected. You can always click these tiny little double squares here to set it to the default, which is black and white. And then this double arrow switches them back and forth. But I need black because the mask is white. So if I paint black on it, it's going to essentially cut through that photo by adding that mask on there. So if I look at where the other version of myself is, so that layer has me in the door there, that one has me off to the right. So on that mask, then I can start painting here. It's going to start showing that layer behind it in that one area that I'm painting on. So now I have two clones of myself. And as long as the photos are lined up, it shouldn't matter that I'm not being super precise as far as the edges of painting around myself from this other photo, because the tripod doesn't move, so things like the trailer and these poles and the grass and all of that stuff in the background is going to stay the same. So now I have that photo showing through to that photo. Then if I go to the next layer, I'm going to add a mask on that. I can turn that eyeball off for a moment. And so it looks like the next one is to show that of me in the chair through to this photo. So I'm going to come over here with my brush. I might even make it a little bit bigger. Brush over this. Looks like the chair isn't quite lined up. I might need to adjust a few things. That's looking pretty good. I want to get all of that there. And the shadows and the sunlight kind of coming through some trees and such are a little bit different. But that's okay. It doesn't look too off. But if I don't want those highlights over on the trailer over there, I could always just switch back to white and get rid of those. But I kind of like the highlight on there, so I think I'm going to keep that. There we go. So now I have that, but if I turn the eyeball on on this top layer, it's going to cover that. So this layer three has layer two showing through to it, but then when I add in layer four, it's covering it over the chair there. So what I need to do is turn that layer back on, go to layer four, and I also need to add a mask in that area. I can just use the same mask and then just paint on over the top so that it's showing through. And then on layer four, it's showing layer three through there, but it's including that part where I'm sitting in the chair. There we go. So you end up with kind of a Russian nesting doll situation with your layers and the masks because you have a layer on top of a layer on top of a layer on top of a layer um, with a mask on top of a mask on top of a mask. So it gets to be a little more complex the more you do. Um, but essentially I have a hole cut through or a window essentially cutting through one layer to show the next one and then I have an additional window or hole cut into that layer to show the one behind it and subsequently the one behind that. So now I'm going to turn those off so I can just focus on showing that one through to that one. So I'm going to add a mask 
and I'm kind of just to the right of there, so I'm going to paint it on right about here. And that pole is not lining up. That is not what I want. So that means that I'm going to have to move some things around. Because we don't want poles that just start out of nowhere. So that means that I need to take this layer here and move it ever so slightly over there. That should work. Then I can go back to my mask and keep painting the black on there. There we go. That's looking a little better. Oh, but it looks like things are a little wonky as far as the height of things. There we go. That's better. Oops. I don't want to be moving that one. I want to be moving this one. Oops, wrong way. I want it right about there. Okay. So now I'm showing layer one through to layer two, but then if I go back to layer three, I need to also paint on the mask on that one too. So I'm going to go to that mask with the brush. And I need to show through this one. I think I moved the wrong layer here because it's not lining up. So if I go to this one with the move tool, there we go. Okay. So now that is showing through. Looks like I missed a little bit on the mask there. So let me go back in with the brush. Add a little more black there. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to turn that one back on and add to that mask right here. Oops, but we have a little bit of overlap, so if you have any of them overlapping, then you want to make sure you're not taking out the part that has another one. So let's move this a little bit so that lines up. But then I'm making this version of me back here disappear. So on that mask, I'm going to go back to white. On the mask and grab the brush and add a little bit more in and so if you have things that overlap you just have to zoom in really close use a fairly small brush might even need to go smaller so that you can kind of outline around one of them to show the other. Let's see. There we go. And bigger areas, you can use a bigger brush to make things go a little quicker, but when you get down to the really detailed stuff, you want to Zoom in really close and use a small brush size. So you don't want any parts of you that are kind of ghosty and disappearing. We want to have full clones of ourselves, not partially transparent clones of ourselves. Okay. It's looking pretty good. I think just around this here, I need to do a little bit smaller. There we go. Way too teeny tiny right in there. There we go. So now, I have all of those. And then, the final one, we need to make sure that one's showing through. So, I'm going to turn those off so I can just focus on these two layers. I'm going to add a mask there. 
and let's see, sitting down there. So that I'm gonna make a brush quite a bit bigger. And add that in there. That things are lining up pretty good, so nothing really needs to be shifted. There we go. Then I'm going to add that in there. And on that mask, I'm going to do the same thing. You can also start at the very bottom of your layers and work your way up. It just kind of depends on how you want to go about it. And let's add that back into the original one there. There we go. Switch back to black. And add that in there. Oh, that pole is a little off. Switch it to white. There we go. And switch that to the black there, just along that. Okay. So now I have that one, and then I just need to go back to this one and add it in as well. And again, we have some overlapping. So that just means that I have to go back in and make sure that I'm not missing legs on the other version of me over here. And just a teeny tiny brush. There we go. And the final one over here. Oops, I'm on the white, on the color selector there. I need to be on the black. So now I have five versions of myself in one photo. Let's see, it looks like we got some inconsistency with, the, with that. So we're just gonna move that over there. There we go. So now I have a convincing version of the clones. Oop, actually turn that back on. There we go, now I have five. We got one, two, three, four, five all in one image so if something isn't showing up from especially one of the farther back layers or farther towards the bottom of the layers just make sure that you are adding the masks to the next mask so on this bottom one here there's nothing then there's one of me then there's two of me then there's three of me or four of me and then there's five of me so your masks are going to get little more complex as you go higher on your layers. So now that's all done and I'm gonna go ahead and say file save as so that I can save that as a Photoshop document. I'm gonna save on my computer. It's going back in my clones folder. If it gets scrunched down like this, it won't give you as many options. So you can click this little triangle thing. It'll expand it. I'm gonna make it a Photoshop document. I'm just gonna Clone. Clones one. Save and okay. So now I have that. If things 
you had to move things around and things aren't lining up on the edges and they're looking a little wonky like this, you can always then crop it. Looks like it's still saving down there, but it might let me crop it. Um, I just have it defaulted to a standard 5x7, but it's vertical, so if I switch it, then it'll be 7x5. And I can scooch it down a little bit. There's a bunch of junk in the background anyway, so maybe if I crop it down like that. There we go. Simplify the whole composition a little bit. Now, that looks a little better. So now I can go ahead and save file, save as on my computer. And that was a cropped version, so I'm just going to say clones1 crop. Otherwise it will save over the top of the other one. So now if I go back to bridge, bridge, now I can say just show me the Photoshop documents. And I have the edited one that I made and then the one that's still saving over here. Is it done? There we go. So I got the PSD and I have the, well, they're both PSDs, but I have the uncropped version and the cropped version.